Dear students, today we will be focused on what is immunity, what are the types of immunity, and what are the components of innate immunity. First of all, let's try to understand the meaning of immunity from one simple question. What is the duty of our body? The answer is to give and monitor all parts of our body healthy. As all animals, including human beings, are continuously exposed to many foreign invaders who are trying to enter inside our body and cause diseases and destroy our body. But our body is protected up to certain limit from such potentially dangerous pathogenic agents because we have a system called defense or immunity. The word immunity stems from the Latin term immunist, meaning exempt. So simply immunity is the ability of the body to protect against all types of foreign bodies like bacteria, viruses, toxic substances, etc. which enter the body. The lack of immunity is known as susceptibility. And the science dealing with the various phenomena of immunity, including immune responses and their role in resisting infections, is called immunology. Further, there are two major types of immunity. The first one is innate immunity and the second one is acquired immunity. Innate immunity is the immunity which is present at the time of birth or type of defense mechanism that exists before infection. It is considered as the first line of immune response. On the other hand, acquired immunity means immunity we acquired after the birth or after exposure to inducing agents such as microbes, abnormal body cells, toxins or other foreign substances. It consists of specialized cells B cells and T cells and antibodies that circulate in the body fluid. It is considered as second line of immune response. Now let us discuss innate immunity and its components in details. Innate immunity is inherited by the organism from the parents and protects the organism from birth throughout life. So it is called natural immunity. Innate immunity lacks specific responses to specific invaders, so it is also called non-specific defense. For example, we have many invaders like it may be bacteria, viruses, or any pathogenic agents. When they try to enter our body, components of innate immunity will give a similar response to all the invaders irrespective of what they are. This type of body responses is known as broad spectrum defense mechanisms or generalized mechanism means similar action for all. In this innate immunity, immunological memory is not generated. Every time they will start from any cell. And one very important point is they show no discrimination between self and non-self. Again, innate immunity is well done by providing four types of defensive barriers to the entry of foreign agents into our body. They are physical barriers, chemical barriers, cellular barrier, and cytokine barrier. First one is the physical barrier. Physical barrier includes skin and mucous membrane. Intact skin is the largest defense organ in our body. Its outer tough layer, the stratum corneum, which is the keratinized stratified squamous epithelium is waterproof and prevents the entry of bacteria and virus. So any type of breaks in the skin resulting from scratches or injury is obvious roots of infection. The second component of physical barrier is the mucous membrane. These membranes consist of an outer epithelial layer and an underlying layer of connective tissue. 
this membranes line the alimentary tract, respiratory tract, urinogenital tract and exposed part of our eyeball which is conjunctiva. When foreign pathogens try to bind and penetrate this mucous membranes secret a substance called mucus which is a viscous fluid that entraps the pathogenic microbes and other particles. In this way, both skin and mucous membrane play an important role to protect our body in non-specific manner. Suppose an invading microbes breaks through these two external or physical defenses, soon it will encounter innate chemical mechanisms which are also called physiological barriers. Skin and mucous membrane act themselves as physical barrier but secretions from skin and membranes that provide an environment that is often hostile to microbes are physical barriers. Some important examples of the physiological barriers are in humans secretions from sebaceous glands and shivam from sweat glands give the skin of pH ranging from 3 to 5 which is acidic enough to prevent colonization by many microbes. Similarly, microbes in food or water and those in the swallowed mucus must fight with the acidic environment of the stomach which destroys most pathogens before they can enter the intestines. Also, secretions from the skin and mucous membranes contain antimicrobial proteins. One such protein is lysozyme, an enzyme that in digests the cell walls of many bacteria present in saliva, tears and in many tissue fluids. They can destroy susceptible bacteria that enter the upper respiratory tract or the openings around the eyes. Some more examples of physiological barriers are nasal hair. Nasal hair filter out microbes and dust in nose. Even urine also one of the example. Urine washes microbes from urethra. Vaginal secretions. Vaginal secretions is slightly acidic which discourages bacterial growth. Bile juice, serum and which is also known as earwax. They all are examples of physiological barriers. But some pathogens can cross these physiological barriers and successfully enter the body via the digestive tract and spread into other tissues of our body. Then internal cellular defenses quickly come into play. They are cellular barriers. Cellular barriers include leukocytes which are also known as the white blood cells, macrophages, natural killer cells, complement system, inflammation, fever, etc. The first component, leukocytes, which is also called white blood cells. All types of leukocytes present in our body can be divided into two groups, granulocytes and agranulocytes. Granulocytes means with cytoplasmic granules, which includes neutrophils, basophils, and eosinophils. Agranulocytes includes lymphocytes and monocytes. Of all the forms of leukocytes, neutrophils and monocytes, they play important role in phagocytosis, means the ingestion of invading microorganisms. Neutrophils are the most abundant of all leukocytes consisting 60 to 70 percent of all white blood cells in human so consider as primary phagocytic cell. They have multi love nucleus and normally called PMNL polymorphonuclear leukocytes. When there is an infection neutrophils are attracted and enter into the infected tissue, engulf and destroy the microbes there. However, they tend to self-destruct in the process of phagocytosis 
and their average lifespan is only a few days. Another important phagocytic cell is monocytes. Monocytes are the largest of all types of leukocytes and amoeboid in shape with horseshoe chef nucleus. They constitute 2 to 10 percent of blood WVC. An even more effective phagocytic defense comes from macrophages, means big eaters. Macrophages are large, long life cells developed from monocytes. New monocytes circulate in the bloodstreams for only a few hours and then migrate into the tissues where they differentiate into specific tissue macrophages. Some macrophages migrate throughout the body while others reside permanently in various organs and tissues. Some examples are alveolar macrophages which is present in the lungs, histiocytes which is present in the connective tissues, CUFA cells in the liver, mesenglion cells in the kidney, microglion cells in the brain, osteocast in bone and cartilage. The third important cellular barrier is natural killer cells which is also known as NKC. Natural killer cells are specific lymphocytes present in the spleen, lymph nodes and red bone marrow but they are non-phagocytic in nature. They constitute 5 to 10 percent of peripheral blood lymphocytes in human. It causes cellular destruction in two ways. First way is natural killer cells they produce perforins which are chemicals that when inserted into the plasma membrane of a microbe cytolysis occurs and creates pores in the plasma membranes of the target cells. These pores allow enter of the fluid which then swell and burst. Cellular remains are eaten by phagocytes. Another important function of natural killer cells is apoptosis which means program cell death. Natural killer cells patrol the body and attack virus infected body cells and cancer cells. Surface receptors of natural killer cell recognize the general features on the surface of its targets. Once it is attached to the virus infected cell or cancer cell, the natural killer cell release chemicals that lead to the death of sprinkle cell by apoptosis. Fourth component of the cellular barrier is complement system. Complement system is a group of over 30 proteins which are present in the blood serum or blood plasma that are produced by liver. They form MAC, membrane attack complex a cylindrical structural complex. When a particular pathogen enters into the bloodstream, they create pores in the plasma membrane of microbes. Then body fluids enters into the microbes which then burst and die. Certain complement proteins also help to trigger inflammations or play a role in phagocytosis. So, the proteins of complement system destroy microbes by cytolysis, inflammation and phagocytosis. These proteins also prevent excessive damage of the host tissues. In the absence of infection, these proteins are inactive. And the fifth component of cellular barrier is inflammation. The term inflammation derives from the Latin inflamer means to set on fire. Inflammation is an attempt to dispose of microbes, toxins or foreign materials at the site of injury to prevent their spread to other tissues and to prepare the site for tissue repair. Damage to tissue by physical injury or 
entry of pathogens leads to release of numerous chemical signals that trigger a localized inflammatory response. One of the most active chemicals is histamine, which is stored in mast cells found in connective tissues. When injured, mast cells release their histamine, triggering dilation and increased permeability of nearby capillaries. Activated macrophages and other cells discharge additional signals such as prostaglandins that further promotes blood flow to the injured site. The resulting increased local blood supply causes the redness and heat, typical condition of inflammation. The blood engorges capillaries, leak fluids into the neighboring tissues causing swelling and pain. This is another sign of local inflammation. Another systemic response to infection is fever. Fever may occur when certain toxins produced by pathogens and endogenous pyrogen, which are fever producing substances released by activated macrophages set the body's thermostat at a higher temperature. A very high fever is dangerous, but moderate fever inhibits the growth of microbes. It also facilitates phagocytosis and by speeding up body reactions, hasten the repair of tissues. The last and the fourth innate barrier is the cytokine barrier. Cytokine barriers are chemical messengers of immune cells, which are low molecular weight proteins that inhibit or stimulate the functions of immune cells. They are involved in the cell-to-cell -cell communication. One of the most important component of cytokine barrier is interferons. There are two types of interferons which provide innate defense against viral infections. Interferons are secreted by virus infected body cells and induce neighboring uninfected cells to produce AVPS, antiviral proteins, which prevent viral reproduction. In this way, interferons limit the cell-to-cell -cell spread of viruses in the body and help to control viral infections. This innate defense mechanism is not virus specific. Interferons produced in response to one virus may also confer short-term resistance to unrelated viruses. So this is all about the innate immunity. Now we will quickly summarize whatever we discuss today. We talk about immunity. Immunity is the ability of the body to resist diseases and the science dealing with the immunity is known as immunology. We also discuss two types of immunity, innate immunity and acquired immunity. Innate immunity is also provided by four defensive barriers. They are physical barriers which involves skin and mucous membranes, physiological barriers, these are the secretions from skin and mucous membranes. Cellular barriers include neutrophils, monocytes, macrophages, natural killer cells, complement system, inflammation, fever, etc. And we also discuss about cytokine barriers. We also talk about the interferons. All these four barriers will protect our body in non-specific manner right from birth till our death. That's all for today. Thank you.